let's talk about salads and salads. Hi folks, Matt Eaton here of Scholar Gladiatorius. So what I've got here are two salads. Now, many people who watch this channel will be completely familiar with what a salad is. Um, and it's a type of 15th century helmet. It comes around in about 1430 by 1440, they're fairly common. By the 1450s, they're pretty much the most popular helmet in Europe and they remain until the 16th century. Um, so they were an extremely successful type of helmet. And you've seen this one many, many times. The other one we'll talk about in a second because that's a new acquisition. Position. Um, but this one goes with my armour, which you see me in. Um, most, or should we say, salads come in three basic varieties, okay? You've got open face salads, which don't have a visor, uh, either used by men at arms who don't feel they need a visor, they're fighting on foot and they just don't want the hassle of having a visor that might get knocked down or get in the way, or used by people like billmen, pikemen, crossbowmen, archers who don't want to, the same thing, they don't want a visor to be in the way. So um, there's open face types, then there's two visored types. There's the type which have a lifting visor like this, and there's types which have essentially a fixed plate here which doesn't have the hinges on the side and you just uh, look through the slit or if you want to use it as an open face helmet you do that. So it's actually a really great design because you don't have a bottom half to the helmet. It does mean that this bit can be fixed and you can, you can uh, if you're facing a load of arrows or advancing into the enemy you can have this down and then when you get into action you can push the back and there we go we've now got an open face helmet. So it's very very versatile and obviously if you want the lower half of the face uh, protected. There's various different ways that that was done. They didn't always wear bottom of the um, half face protection, but most famously a bever, which I've shown uh, many times before, a bever, a plate which goes around the jaw and up to and over the nose. It depends on the type of bever. There's different types. Some go all the way around the back. Some are just at the front. Some go all the way high up uh, sort of to the ears. Some come over nose level. Some finish down here. Some leave a gap, uh, which might be surprising to some of you. But remember, as I've mentioned many times in previous videos, an important factor in warfare, in campaigning, is being able to breathe, see, talk, eat, drink, all of these things. So compromises have to be made. You could fully encase your head in steel, uh, but you'd suffocate. <laughs> okay, So um, quite simply, compromises have to be made. And a salad is a very, very good compromise helmet. Uh, it's not what you'd necessarily choose for poleaxe combat on foot or jousting on horseback, but it's a great war helmet. Now, what I want to briefly look at here is that there are salads and there are salads. So we've just talked about three types of salad, open-faced, visored with a lifting visor and fixed with um, a sort of fixed visor, we could say. Um, but what we've got here are also two different styles of salad. Now there are multiple styles of salad. There are some styles which many people would associate more with England and the Low Countries and France. There's styles you'd associate more with Italy, styles you'd associate more with Germany, Spain, so on and so forth. So there are region specific types of salad. But there are also what we could call international <laughs> salads, an international salad. Um, and both of these are bordering on that. Well, so this one is, I would say, an international salad, okay? So a salad like this could be made in Italy, Germany, Fl uh, Flemish lands, Flanders, Low Countries, uh, France, possibly even England, um, and then exported anywhere else. So it could be made in Italy and exported to England. It could be made in Germany and sent to France. Um, so this is an international style salad, and we'll talk more about the specifics of this in a second. This is, we could say, a slightly more German uh, than international salad. So there is a difference between these two. Now, neither of these is extreme. None of the salads, well, that's not totally true. One of my open face salads is a tart style that's associated with England, but we'll talk about that another time. Most of the salads that I have owned are basically of this international style, but some people have specifically German salads or specifically Italian salad. Now, what is the basic difference between these two? I should also mention this has just come to me second hand uh, from a friend of mine who was selling off some armour. Um, I grabbed it because it's made by a, a very nice armourer called uh, Peter Poliak. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, and um, he's working out of Serbia now, I think, um, but his armour is very good quality and this is very nicely shaped and it's modelled on an original 
in a museum. Uh, it's a German-made example. We'll talk more about that in the future, the specifics of that, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. So this is based on an example which is attributed to a German maker. That being said, whilst this is a German salad, it's not full German. <laughs> it hasn't gone full German in the sense that there are certain types of salad which are really, really, you look at them and go, yeah, that's German. This is not really, it sort of is one of those, but it's not quite all the way down the, down the German rabbit hole, so to speak. Um, it's not full German, it's verging on international style. Now, there are some differences between these two. Um, obviously, you'll notice they've got slightly different visors. Sorry, I'll just pull that visor down, there we go. They've got slightly different uh, visors and they're made by different people, so they're gonna have a slightly different look to them. I would say the Peter Polyak one is better shaped overall than the Mark Vickers one. Um, um, they are both hardened carbon steel, so they're both good functional bits of armour. But for the purposes of this video, it can illustrate a couple of points. So you'll notice that the visors are fundamentally quite similar. You will notice that this one actually juts out on the lower part more, and that is a feature that I believe, in general, we see more in Western Europe. We see more in France and England um, and the Low Countries and in Italy as well when they have this style of visor on them. A lot of Italian salads are actually open faced, but anyway. Um, German salads can have that, but they sometimes have more of a flush face to the visor. That being said, there's not a colossal amount of difference between these two visors in their overall design, okay? That is really it. It's just that this one has a slightly more jutting out lower part to it, below the vision slit, okay? Um, but what we're really gonna look at here is the backs. Now you'll notice the back of this one, it comes around and then goes almost down in a straight line. Now it does actually go inward slightly, which is what partly makes this a bit more international in style, in, in my opinion. It goes inwards and then it flares out quite a long way. This one, on the other hand, doesn't quite go out as far. This tail doesn't quite go out so far and this curves more inwards. You'll also notice the bottom edge to these salads. This one is curved, a bit like the bottom of a, a boat, okay? And this one is more of a straight line. So these are tendencies that we tend to see differences between something that's more of a German salad and more of a salad that's from, a lot of people would say Italian, but actually we could say French or Flemish or even English in some cases. This is something, this is a type of salad which you're more likely to find in France, Low Countries and England with those features, with that scooped in back and not such a massive tail sticking out at the back and a curved line at the bottom. This type with a very straighter line, it's not completely straight, but straighter line down here and almost straight at the back. Now, some German, a full German salad will often be actually not coming in at all, but curving all the way out backwards and sticking out quite a long way. This doesn't stick out a crazy long way. Some of the German ones really, really do. And in fact, in the 16th century, they get sort of crazy long at the back, some of them. And some of them, some of the German ones just literally curve down in a straight line from the back here, so they don't come in at all. That makes this, yes, it's a German salad, yes, it exhibits German features, yes, we know the original it's based on is German made, um, but it's got some sort of international features. So it's possible that this was made in Germany for export to somewhere like Austria, France, uh, maybe even the Low Countries, um, or it could just be that the person in Germany who ordered this helmet or bought this helmet liked that slightly more international style and they hadn't gone fully down the kind of uh, German rabbit hole, as it were, that became famously Gothic armour after 1480. So here we go. This is, this is basically how we judge the difference, how you can sort of get a sense, sometimes, not always, of where salads come from, whether they're more from Germany, or whether they're maybe more from Italy or France. And very often you will see in books or museum um, item descriptions, uh, object descriptions, something being described as a German salad or something being described as an Italian salad. And the final thing I want to say on this is that it's a real um, uh, pitfall, I think, that armor descriptions fall down of describing things as Italian or German. Yes, Italy and Germany were two of the biggest armor making um, regions at this time in the 15th century, but, Flanders and France and to some extent uh, England were producing lots of armour as well. There was armour being produced in Spain. 
So there were other places making these uh, salads and some of them being made in international style. So you can get an international style salad being made in Germany or Italy or Flanders or any of these places and shipped somewhere else, as I said before. So there we go, really just to say that if you're looking at these salads, there are difference, there are regional differences, but sometimes there are salads which are a bit hazy and in the middle ground and would be of an international style and they're much more difficult to place. So much so that I was looking at a salad this morning in the Philadelphia Museum of Art on their website and they described it as a German salad or Italian. <laughs> so uh, they weren't really sure. And you could see, looking at it, you could see why it was basically international style. Um, and just lastly to say as well, that as well as these international salads being popular kind of all over Europe, nevertheless, there are regional tendencies. So if you go to England, you see certain things on salads like a twisty tops and pointy onion tops um, and certain types of visor sometimes with a, a strut between the two eye holes. You also find those in the Low Countries in France, which of course geographically are close to England and were, had a lot of trade with them as well. But those types of helmets were clearly popular in England. If you go to Germany, as I said, you, you find that certain types of salad with quite long uh, straight scooped backs were quite, quite popular. Um, and so on and so forth. So you do find regional preferences but you also find the international styles there as well. I hope this has been somewhat interesting for some of you, um, and I hope I'll see you back on the channel again soon. Cheers for watching, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.